It's currently mid-February 2022, and since my last update in November 2021, there has been a few media reports centred around an organised pedophile ring operating in eastern Lake Macquarie in the 1970s and 1980s, as well as the emergence of a new name in relation to these investigations. But first, I'll update you on the court appearances of the McCorriston and Matea brothers. The first of the recent court appearances was for Richard Matea on January 13 at Blacktown Local Court for a brief status committal hearing. This was reported in the Blacktown Advocate as follows. A man charged with child sex crimes has had his case moved up to Newcastle to match up with his twin brother's case. Richard Matea, 69, appeared before Blacktown Court on Thursday. He is facing eight charges three counts of sexual assault plus indecent act in company, two counts sexual assault in sight indecent act, person under 16, two counts of sexual assault in decent act with person under 16, and sexual intercourse with child 10 or over and under 16 years. At the brief hearing on Thursday, the Director of Public Prosecutions asked for the matter to be moved to Newcastle Court in three weeks to match up with the case of his twin brother, Stephen Mateer. Stephen Mateer is facing 41 charges, including multiple counts of sexual intercourse, with child 10 or over and under 16 years, sexual assault plus indecent act in company, sexual assault in sight indecent act, person under 16, and sexual assault indecent act with person under 16. In court on Thursday, legal aid representative Naomi Steinberg did not apply for bail on Matea's behalf and did not oppose the three-week adjournment for brief status. The twin brothers were arrested following reignited investigations into the night Amanda Robinson went missing in Swansea in 1979. They were arrested and charged after police conducted inquiries into a private fundraiser at the former Swansea Bowling Club in Lake Macquarie on the night she went missing on April 20. Strike Force Arapaima, which was established to re-examine the 1979 disappearances and suspected murders of Robin Hickey and Amanda Robinson, as well as the 1994 kidnapping and suspected murder of Gordana Katevsky, uncovered information relating to the sexual abuse of two boys in the late 1980s and early 1990s by two men known to them. There is no suggestion that the twins were involved in these suspected murders or kidnappings. Richard Matea was arrested and charged at his Seven Hills home on November 17 before his brother, Stephen Matea, was arrested on November 25 in Greenacre. Both will appear in Newcastle Court on February 2. As reported here, The Matea brothers next appeared at Newcastle Local Court on February 2 for the same type of hearing. As an aside, I came across another hearing involving a Richard Matea 
at Gosford Local Court on February 10 last year. I don't know if it is the same Richard Mateer or what the matter was, but it could have been anything, even something as simple as a disputed parking ticket. Who knows? But uh, anyway, next we have David McCorriston, who appeared at Newcastle Local Court on January 19 for a further mention committal hearing. As discussed in my previous videos, he has also been charged with alleged historical sexual assaults against boys. I also came across another court hearing for David's brother, Warren McCorriston, at Southport Court on 8 February. I will discuss more information about this uh, in my next video where I'll discuss a bit more about Warren McCorriston that I have found out. I'll now go over a couple of newspaper articles from late December and early January. The first was from the Weekend Australian on December 24. Sex Fiends in Link to Teens Murder Case An exclusive from David Murray, the National Crime Correspondent A police strike force investigating the suspected murders of two Lake Macquarie teenagers more than 40 years ago is examining the association between jailed hospitality executive Warren McCorriston and accused child sex offenders, including male scouts leader. After being convicted and jailed this year for sexual assaults on three women, McCorriston, 60, emerged as a person of interest in the disappearances of Amanda Robinson, 14, and Robin Hickey, 18, within weeks of each other in April 1979. It can now be revealed detectives from Strike Force Arapaima are examining McCorriston's past close association with George Cecil a scouts leader jailed for possessing child abuse images. Now, I haven't mentioned George Cecil before, so this is a new name that's come up. Both McCorriston and Cecil are believed by investigators to have attended a private fundraiser at the former Swansea Bowling Club on April 20. 1979, the night Robinson vanished. Robinson had just attended a school dance. She was dropped off at a Swansea bus stop and was walking the few hundred metres to her home at the same time the bowling club was closing and the scouts meeting was finishing police have discovered. Arapaima detectives last month charged twin brothers Richard and Stephen Matia, 69, with the sexual abuse of two boys known to them in the 1980s and early 90s. Richard Matia was signed into the same Swansea fundraiser the night Robinson disappeared. Police have information suggesting his brother, Stephen, was there as well. Arapaima is examining the movements and associations of all of the men. About five years before Robinson and Hickey vanished, Cecil is alleged to have groomed and sexually assaulted a teenage scout, Roger Steele, on a hiking trip. McCorriston, then a teenager, attended the same trip. Speaking publicly about the events for the first time, 
Mr Steele told the Weekend Australian he went through Belmont Primary and High Schools with McCorriston. They had been a year below Hickey at the high school. She went on to become a dental nurse and was last seen at a bus stop on the Pacific Highway at Belmont North on Saturday, April 7, 1979. McCorriston was about to turn 18 at the time. Both boys were also in the second Belmont Sea Scouts together, meeting on Friday nights in the local Ernest Street Scouts Hall. At the time, I didn't notice anything that might have predicted the man he, McCorriston, has become. However, I can tell you from first-hand experience, there was child abuse taking place in that Scouts group. Mr Steele said, Sometimes the young Scouts and their adult supervisors would pitch their tents at Camp Canangra in Nord's Wharf. It's where Strike Force Arapaima, led by Detective Sergeant Christy Faber, this year conducted a series of digs in search of the teenagers' remains. Mr Steele said he, McCorriston, and another boy were all around 13 in 1974 when Cecil invited them to... I'll just get up here. No, he didn't invite them to. He invited them on a scout's hike in the Wattigan Mountains west of Belmont. Cecil was a bus driver. Now, I think the Mateer brothers were also bus drivers. And I would also note bus stops and disappearing victims were waiting at bus stops. So I'm not saying they were involved, but there is a common factor there. Anyway, I'll continue. So Cecil was a bus driver around twice their age and visited their parents for permission to take them away for several days. He said, During the many hours we walked in the remote bushland, George would tell us explicit sexual stories, Mr Steele said. Some of the tales were around Cecil's fantasies about women passengers on the bus. So, the bus theme again. Others were about sex games he played with boys as a child, Mr Steele said. One evening, while searching for firewood, George found me alone and he sexually assaulted me. The sexual excitement in that man's face is unfortunately seared in my memory, he said. The trip was captured in a photograph Cecil took of the three boys later sent to them. Decades later, in 2008, Mr Steele made a complaint to police. When detectives subsequently executed search warrants at Cecil's home, they seized his computer equipment and discovered child abuse images. Boxes at the home contained printouts and clippings related to torture and human degradation. There were also clippings of news items relating to the disappearances of Robinson and Hickey, the Weekend Australian can reveal. Detectives were unable to corroborate Mr Steele's allegations and Cecil was not charged over them before his death in 2015. McCorriston told police he never witnessed anything in and insisted the former scouts leader was a good man, 
saying they remained friends until his twenties. The other youth, who asked not to be named, said he could not recall anything happening. McCorriston's description of Cecil in glowing terms contrasted with information gathered by detectives. Further investigations resulted in McCorriston becoming a person of interest in the Robinson and Hickey disappearances. After moving to Queensland, McCorriston rose through the hospitality ranks to become manager of Daydream Island Resort. He was body corporate manager at the Gold Coast Q1 high-rise when Arapaima arranged his arrest in January last year for sexual assaults against three women in the New South Wales Hunter region between 1979 and 1997. In June, he was jailed for eight and a half years. The offences did not relate to the missing teens. Okay, so there was a new person named there, George Cecil. Uh, he died in 2015, so he's taken his secrets to the grave. But anyway, well, if you well, I dare say he had any, but if he had ones relevant to the disappearances, we probably never know. But hopefully um, we'll get some people who do know to say something before they take their secrets to the grave. The next article I'll read was in the Sunday Telegraph on January 9. It does cover a lot of the same material, but I do like how the writer Dan Proudman seems to paint a bit more of a colourful picture with his words. It is headed, Did Old Box Lift Lid on Sex Predators Serial Killings? So... What does he have to say? He says, Several hidden cardboard boxes whose evil contents were found spilling out through their ragged sides and weathered masking tape lifted the lid on a pedophile ring that may lead to answers to a 40-year-old mystery. I'll try and be a little bit less dramatic for the rest of the article. Okay, police found them in 2010 in the home of Scoutmaster and bus driver George Cecil, who was being investigated for child abuse. As they feared, they found plenty of horrific scenes of child abuse. But the discovery that raised the eyebrows of investigators was a collection of old newspaper clippings neatly placed atop one another. Each page was on the same subject, the bizarre disappearances of three teenage girls from eastern Lake Macquarie in the late 1970s. Cecil was being looked at by detectives after they had received a statement from former 2nd Belmont Sea Scouts member Roger Steele alleging Cecil abused him on a scouting trip a few years before the girls disappeared. Also on that camp was young Warren McCorriston a fellow Sea Scouts member who remains a person of interest in the disappearances of two of the girls. As detectives delved into Cecil and his background, they uncovered connections and tentacles of what they strongly suspect was a sophisticated pedophile ring that ran through Lake Macquarie and beyond for decades. And evidence of the depravity also extended through parts of the Sea Scouts, 
with a fundraiser for the organisation now the central focus of the strike force that is hunting the person responsible for the disappearance and suspected murders of the girls in the 1970s. Robin Hickey and Amanda Robinson vanished within a fortnight of each other in April 1979. Robin, 18, from Belmont North bus stop, and Amanda, 14, as she walked walked home after getting off a bus from a school dance. There's the bus again. The Scouts fundraiser held at the former Swansea Bowling Club was finishing as Amanda was walking past. Warren McCorriston and George Cecil both attended the meeting along with two other men who have since been charged with unrelated child abuse offences relating to boys as a result of the police investigation. So that would obviously be the Mateer brothers. Strike Force Arapaima detectives continue to investigate names and possible aliases written in the visitor's book from that fundraiser. One of the men was driving a green Holden Tirana. As a bit of a spoiler for my next video, if you don't want to hear, skip ahead a few seconds, but I'll let you know that uh, apparently Warren McCorriston owned a green Tirana at that time. But anyway, I'll continue. In 2019, Strike Force Arapaima detectives called a press conference and released images of a green mid-1970s model Tirana seen driving in and around the East Lakes area at the time Amanda went missing. None of the men at the fundraiser have faced any charges relating to Hickey and Robinson. Cecil, who was jailed for child pornography found with the newspaper articles, never faced any child abuse charges relating to Mr Steele. So that is alleged, technically alleged as well. He died in 2015. The discovery of the widespread sex ring led investigators to the former Canangra Scout Camp at Nord's Wharf, which the Sea Scouts had used. The site has been the scene of two searchers looking for the remains of Robin and Amanda. Nothing was found. Part of the reason the case against Cecil was dropped was because Warren McCorriston, a close friend of Mr Steele and a student at the same school as Robin Hickey attended, was unable to corroborate his fellow scout's account. Mr Steele said Warren McCorriston, who was sentenced last year to eight and a half years jail for attacks on three women between 1980 and 1999 was a friend at school. So they were friends. I never knew he had behaved so appallingly towards women, Mr Steele said. He would remember being photographed naked by George Cecil on the trip in the 1970s, but he told police nothing other than he and Cecil were friends. And I just don't know why he would do that. So it seems from Roger Steele's point of view, Warren McCorriston knew what happened, or at least knew they were photographed naked, and... Um, he can't understand why his friend, or his friend at the time, wouldn't have said anything. But So maybe they had secrets to share and were protecting each other, but 
that's only a thought not necessarily true anyway so it seems that Swansea Bowling Club function on the 20th of April 1979 had three scout leaders at it or at least two confirmed and a possible third who were bus drivers which seemed to fit a pattern that I've discussed in previous videos about bus stops and were also child sex abusers or alleged I should say um, though the Mateer brothers have previously been convicted of such offences so and we also have Warren McCorriston also known as a violent sex offender he's been convicted of that um, and he was also there and driving a green Tirana apparently and so we have two three at least three sex offenders possibly a third and who knows maybe there were others um, possibly leaving that function at the same time as Amanda Robinson was probably walking through the car park on her way home so a bit of a concern bit of coincidence um, but there's no confirmation that they were involved in her disappearance so it can only be described as a coincidence at this stage um, hopefully someone who knows something will say something at some stage even if they leave a note to be found after their death or something just so there's some closure at some stage in my next video I'm going to discuss more details about Warren McCorriston that I have only recently found out and hence I haven't mentioned them in previous videos this includes what seems to be some time he spent in jail previously for non-violent crimes and also an alleged attempted abduction of a 10 year old girl in early 1979 so make sure you subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when I upload this and future videos. I'm David A. Elliott. Have a good one and see you around like a rissle.